Hi and welcome to this DCP Word tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to enable Pi menus in Blender 2.9. So let's go ahead and open up Blender. And I'm using Blender 2.9, it's the latest version. So I'm just going to left click outside here. And we've got an object, right? We're going to enable Pi menu. So we're going to go to Edit Preferences. And inside the add ons, we're going to type in Pi, P I E. And we're going to enable the Pi menus interface, this one here. So just tick it off. And as default, Blender will automatically save it. It's set to auto save. So we can close this. And we've got Pi menus, right? So let's just go back there and let's just check one thing. So when we go to Pi menus, you click on this drop down and just expand this window. My advice is what you should do is just screen capture this bit of information here. Just screen capture it, yeah? Screen capture it. So you've got like a visual graphic of it because there's a lot of different shortcuts that you can use and they all do different things and you're gonna to have to try and learn those shortcuts but in theory they should help speed up your workflow when you're using blender so a good example of this is um let's click on this object here let's just um press shift and s and when we press shift and s we can see all these different options appear right so for an example if i were to take the 3d cursor and move it to say let's say this position over here and then I can click on an object, let's select this cube, press Shift and S and the Pi menus turn up here. And it's a selection, so the object is the square, this cube and selection to cursor. So move this object to where the 3D cursor is. If I click this top, top, top option or press number eight, it will move that object to the 3D cursor, right? Nice and simple. So there's other things you can do. So let's press Shift and A and let's insert, let's say a UV sphere. So the UV sphere is going to get placed wherever the 3D cursor is at that point in time, right? So we can press G to grab it and move it over here. Let's just press S to scale it and let's just scale it up. Uh, I don't want to scale it that much. Let's just scale it up a little bit. And then I can click on this cube. So I can select the cube and then I can hold down the shift key and select the, um, the sphere. Then I can press shift and S and I can do selection to active. So when I do that, it's going to move the cube to that active object. Can you see? So we can reset the 3D cursor by pressing Shift and C. Shift and C. So now the 3D cursor is back into the center of the screen here because we reset it. And then we can press, uh, we can just left click and select both these objects. We can press Shift and S to open up the Pi menu. Then we can do selection to cursor. And then we can move both those objects back to the center point here, right to the center here. What else we can do is click on this object, press G to grab it, then let's do X, or let's do um, uh, let's do Y and just move it across. So we've got this object here separated away so we can see it nice and easy. And there's some other shortcut keys that we can do. So we can do, uh, let's see, we can do Alt and X, I believe. Alt and X, no, it's, it's uh, Control Shift X. So Control Shift X, allows us to bring up the origin to geometry and origin to 3D cursor. So things like, let's say for example, um, we can set the origin point to the bottom of an object. So when we click that, the origin point now is at the sitting at the bottom, right? We can do shift uh, alt, sorry, control alt and X, and then we can do origin to selection. Or we can do origin to geometry, or we can do origin to cursor. So we do origin to cursor, the origin point for this object is now at the center point where the 3D cursor is. So if we were to zoom out, let's just go to, let's just zoom out a little bit here, for example. If we were to grab this object and then press um, R to rotate and then Z, we've moved the origin point. Now the object will ro rotate around that particular origin point like this, you see? So we can do simple things like that using the Pi menu. It's just a shortcut, it just enables us to move objects or manipulate objects a lot, lot quicker. And it's quite a lot to learn, right? So if you look at all the different Pi menu options, I screen captured them here. There's quite a few to learn. I'm still learning and understanding all of them myself, but if you can familiarize yourself with these uh, shortcuts, like I said, screen capture them and then go and experiment with them and understand what they do, then it can um, speed up your workflow when you're using Blender as well. So we can click back on that object, Control, Alt and X, and then we can move the origin to the selection or we can move the origin to the center mass or the, um, uh, move the origin to the center mass. So we click that, it will move it right back to the center of this particular object, right? And then we can click on that and then we can press Shift and S and then we can move selection to cursor and it will move it back to the 3D cursor. Now it's all back centered nicely in the middle of the screen. So Pi menus are quite important to learn. You don't have to use them, but I would advise that you 
at least at least try and enable them and try and learn them and do a screen capture you could even print that out on a piece of paper so you got it for reference um, and start to learn these shortcut keys uh, or the hotkeys for the pie menu and that will help you to speed up your workflow in blender okay let's go ahead and close this and we're not going to save this file and as default the pie menu will always be enabled when you load up blender next time because the save auto preferences are already enabled okay let's go ahead and close this that's how you go about enabling pie menu in blender 2.9 i hope you find this tutorial useful don't forget to try and learn some of those pie menu shortcuts and what they do just go and experiment that's sometimes the best way to learn things is just to go and play around and experiment that's the end of this tutorial i hope you find it useful and i look forward to seeing you in the next dcp tutorial